So you got your Bibles? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. What we're going to try to do in this six-week pursuit is, is do a quick through John, okay? So we're not going to hit the whole book, obviously, if you only have six weeks to do it. So we're going we're gonna to hit some major starting points in, in, all the way through the book of John, trying to take this pursuit of Jesus. John was a pursuer of Jesus, started as a very young man. Um, and, and what I like about John is when you read the book of John, he never talks about himself. He's the guy that's always missing from a conversation. So, uh, or never names himself, but he's there. Um, he's, he's, he's always about pursuing Jesus. Um, we have this question that comes up in our car a lot when we're, when we're going out to eat. What do you want? Where do you want to eat? Now see, I'm not picky. I'm a food connoisseur. I will just about eat anything. Kevin, you my man on that one? Yeah. If it's food, I'm happy. You know, I'm not, I'm not a picky eater. Um, my wife is a little bit more picky, and of course she's even become a little, well, I don't even want to use the word little. She even became more picky after, okay, this, this issue that she's had in the last month. And it kind of changed everything. I mean, salt, gone, um, cheese, gone, milk, zero percent. You know, not one percent, not skim, not two, not three. No, there's not three. The whole, there it is, whole, zero. I mean, so when we go out to eat, you know, on the, so where do you want to eat? We're like, she's like, I ask her, no, 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 you tell me, because cause I don't care, I'll eat, period. So when she picks the place, then we're fine. You know, so I am not a picky eater, but what I've, what I found out about what we want, we don't always know about what we want, but we always know what we don't want. Every one of us know what we don't want. I mean, it's, that is so crystal clear in our brains that we, we, we jump on that one way before we are clear on what we always want. I mean, what we want is sometimes foggy, but what we don't want is crystal. In John 1, starting with verse 35, uh, it, it's John the Baptist is, is standing along and he has two young men with him. It, it names one later, his name is Andrew. The other one, Bible historians believe, was, was John because he liked to skip his name. So John the Beloved, and not John Gillick, John the Beloved, John likes to call himself John the Beloved. Anyway, uh, John and Andrew were standing there with John the Baptist when Jesus walks by. And that's where we join this conversation, okay? It says, uh, verse one, chapter one, verse 35. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Now, number one, okay? These two young men, when they heard that it was Jesus, the Messiah, when they heard he was the Messiah, they followed him. I mean, all they had to do, had, all they had to hear was, this is him. This is the Lamb of God. Boom. These two young men are following him. And th the second thing that happens is, as Jesus walking along with these two young men follow him, he suddenly turns around and goes, what do you want? And, and the question wasn't like, what do you want, as in, <laughs> what are you guys up to? What's going down? It was more like, what are you seeking? Because Jesus always went deeper than just exterior words. His thoughts were eternal. So when he asks, what do you want? It's not the shallow little question. It's a deep question. What are you seeking? I mean, and every one of us in our lives are seeking something. Every one of us are seeking things. Sometimes we're seeking to move up in our job, and it, and it takes our 
uh, minds. I mean, that's our focus. Sometimes we're, we're seeking to be comfort, more comfortable, so we're trying to, you know, m- maybe buy something that we think will make us more comfortable. No, we're seeking all these things that really are kind of shallow, when the main thing we should be sa- seeking is Jesus. These, these two young men got it. I mean, they are following him, and he turns around and says, what do you want? And I love their answer. I mean, their answer, answer is awesome because, I mean, most, most guys wouldn't have asked this question. What do you want? And their answer is, where do you stand? See, they, they didn't want to just go and, and ask him a, a, a theological question because they knew that wouldn't really get them where they wanted to go. They wanted to find out who he was. They wanted to find his heart. They wanted, to, they wanted to know everything about him, and the only way to know everything about him was to go where he lives. I mean, they're, they want to be the ultimate stalker. They want to be around 24-7. And the only way to do that is to know where he's at, where he's staying. So that way, that, that way you, couldn't, you couldn't just... Get away from them. They know your address. You know, you don't like to always tell everybody where you live, do you? I mean, is that the first thing you announce when you go shopping? Hey, I live at 62 C. I'm off road. Come and see me. That's my address. Okay. All right. But not everybody does that. You don't do that at Walmart, do you? In front of everybody? Hey, it's nice to meet you. I live at, you don't give your address. When you're on uh, Facebook, do you type in your address all the time? You know where I live? You shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I mean, but we're not so, and so Jesus, they ask him, where do you live? Matthew chapter seven, there's this, there's this great verse where Jesus says, ask, I think it's verse seven, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So Jesus says, uh, right from the beginning, he said, you need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock. These are all pursuit type answers. They are all, you need to pursue. You need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock, because if you don't, you're not going to get there. You're not going to find the answer. You're never going to find what you're looking for. And these two young men are doing exactly that. Where are you staying? And Jesus' answer is, come and find out. I love the answer. Because he's saying, you can't, he doesn't just say, here's my address. Because see, when we read the Bible, a lot of times that's all we're doing is finding out the address. You know, I know a lot of people who call themselves Christians who don't really know Jesus. They don't really know him. They know about him, they believe in him, but they don't really know him. There's a difference between just believing and knowing him. I, I wanna know him. I wanna know his power. I wanna know his glory. I wanna know his joy, his love, his peace. I don't wanna just know about him. I wanna know him. These two young men are in that place. I want to know you. So Jesus' answer isn't just, here's my address. He says, follow me, and I'll show you. So what he's saying is, let's start the journey right now. Because see, the only way you're going to know who Jesus is, the only way you're going to figure out what life is all about, is if you start the journey. The journey isn't just, well, you come to the altar and you're on the journey. It's an everyday thing. I pursue Jesus every day. I mean, it's, it's, about, it's about life. And that's what Jesus was trying to get across to these two young men. Follow me, because it doesn't just end here, it's the beginning here. This is the start. Follow me and find out is the answer. Follow me and you'll find what you're seeking. You'll find what you're asking for and you'll find what you're knocking for, but you're never gonna find it until you follow. You have to drop everything else 
and follow. This is the problem with the whole pursuit thing. We're already pursuing everything else. We have life. I mean, come on, life is crazy. I uh, had a crazy week this week. Uh, well, I've had a crazy month, okay? You know, with, with the ha- what happened to Anita, and, and uh, that's kind of changed everything for the last month. But then this week, you know, I, um, I, I didn't have a day off all week because I was doing something for the church all week. Friday, Friday we had to run in here Friday, and, and uh, we got the dividers up in the women's bathroom. Looks awesome, by the way. Uh, thank you, Dave. Dave did a lot, and we really appreciate it, and he helped us put it all together. But, uh, you know, so working hard on that, and then, then uh, Saturday I had to help a cousin move from Marysville over to here. You know, so we, we went over and unloaded a U-Haul at her house, which she is moving directly behind Jordan's house, Jordan Day. Um, and he would be here, but he's at a baby dedication of his nieces, so uh, up in Twisp, so, which is pretty awesome that he can do that. So, uh, but you know, what I'm saying is life is busy. Every one of you have jobs, you have things you got to do, uh, you have family. You have, man, if you have kids, you're busy just with kids. I mean, kids make life busy. It's, and, and if you're a grandparent, well, you're always finding something. To, it's, we pursue life. And life pursues us. I mean, uh, you want to get a curveball, live for a while. As long as you live, you're going to get curves, Ty. Because <laughs> I, I threw him a curve this morning. It, uh, God's going to throw curves at us through our whole lives. I, we did not plan on a heart issue this, this year. It, that wasn't in our planning. We had other things planning, planned like going back to Hawaii would be awesome. You know, that's a thing to plan for. Not a heart issue. And, you know, there goes all your money that would have went to Hawaii. You know, it's kind of, okay, refocus. You know, and, and it's not just that. It's a whole lifestyle change. It's, it's, it's a whole change for Anita. You know, and, and so we're trying to go through all, man, you Life is about busy. And God knows that. If there's anyone who knows about life, it's God. That's why Jesus came and lived here for 33 years. He knows all about life. He was a carpenter. Worked with his father. He knows what it's like to work. He knows what it's like to work with your hands. His hands were not soft, tender. He, was a, he worked with his dad. He knew what it was like to have slivers in your hands and scars from uh, bashing your fingers with a hammer. I'm sh- I, he knew all about that. He knew all about the busyness of life. All his disciples, disciples were workers. They were fishermen and tax collectors and businessmen. And, and they, were, they were busy people. They, life is about busy. God knows that. But in the middle of that, God is saying, I want to be the one you pursue. See, all the other stuff, he says, if you seek me, I'll take care of the rest. I want to be the one you pursue. So when Jesus is saying, I'll show you where I live, he's saying, follow me, not just for now for the rest of your life. Because see, later on, maybe you, you didn't know this was chronologically, but chronologically, the disciples are by their boats later fishing. In fact, one of those guys is John. And John had already met Jesus. He already followed. He already knew where he lived. But here comes Jesus walking by the sea, and they're fishing, and he says, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. I mean, the whole thing is an ending. Jesus is starting this continuous thing. Follow me. What do you want? See, if, if all, all that we want is here, we're missing the point of life. The point of life is not about here. It's not. See, the, the enemy of our souls loves us to focus here. That life is all about here. It's all about what we do here, what we accomplish here. No, it's all about what I accomplish here for there. 
It's all about there. And, and what Jesus is trying to get across, guys, what do you want? If you want the wrong things, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the whole point. If you're, if you're going and if you're pursuing the wrong things, you're going to miss the whole point of life. And the whole point of life is Jesus. Jesus said, follow me and you'll find out where home is. Follow Jesus and you'll find out your home isn't here. It isn't here. You know, I've, I've held a lot of jobs in my life. I have. I've been a farmer. I've done about every job you can think of in an orchard. From, uh, I started off thinning. So I thinned apples. Didn't thin pears. I don't know if you thin pears. Never been involved with pears that much except for hauling bins out. Did that. But uh, thinned apples. I got fired from my first apple thinning job. Because I, I got in an apple fight with the other kids that were there. There was a whole bunch of us in an area. They put all of us kids together. And the grandsons of the orchard owner were in the orchard with us. And they were all about our age. We got in an apple fight. I don't know if you've ever gotten in an apple fight with little green apples. Man, they are like hit, getting hit with a rock. I mean, they're hard as a rock. And we're firing them through the trees, just whack, you know. And the problem is when you're doing that, you're hitting other apples that are probably going to stay on the tree. And once they're hit, they're bruised. Period. So the owner of the orchard, who is a board member in my dad's church, comes walking up and catching this big apple. He could hear us. I mean, it's obvious. You could hear him way up on the hillside. He could hear us all yelling, you know, woo you know, and, ow, you know, and all this stuff going on. So he knew before he ever got there, and he comes walking around the corner. Vern, get your ladder and follow me. I don't know why he picked me first. Maybe I threw the first apple, I don't know. <clears throat> don't want to condemn myself. But uh, he knew I was kind of an instigator. So he just grabbed me, took me off all by myself, and I was mad at him. Yeah, it died. <laughs> okay. So I got fired for thinning an apple tree pear. How many of you have heard Probably none of you. <laughs> so I'm the worst sinner in an orchard. And I was only like, uh, I think about 13 when I did that. I don't know if you've ever thinned apples, but... My dad wanted us to learn what it was to work for a living, so I ended up thinning apples. Of course, I, you know, the amazing thing about this guy is he hired me back the very next day. So I grew up around the orchard. Years later, I was spraying in an orchard and hauling fruit, and I get hired every once in a while to still haul fruit out of an orchard. I've driven tractor a lot, worked in grocery stores, I've done a lot of different jobs. Always busy. When I get home, there's lots of stuff to do at home. And if any, any of you own a house, you know what I'm talking about. There's always something to do. I still got trees to prune. It's been a hard year to prune. You know, I got the pacemaker changed out so I couldn't use this arm for a while. So I just now get start to get it back and get ready to go out there. And then we have Anita and that shut down the pruning. And I was going to kick in, do some pruning this weekend. And we, we moved to Seattle suddenly over here and the rain started pouring. It was weird weather. But uh, they're always busy. Always. Every one of you are going to stand before God someday, and being busy is not going to cut it. It's not going to be an excuse. All he'll do is look at you and say, you pursued the wrong thing. 
Because right now God is asking you, what do you want? What do you want? I mean, the ultimate question of life is, what do you want? What, what do you want about life? What is, what is life to you? And God wants your answer to be, where do you live, Jesus? Because I want to follow you. I want to follow you. And his answer to you is, come and see. Because God wants to show you where he lives. You know, someday when I, when I get to heaven, I want to get a tour, not by somebody else. I want Jesus to give me a tour. I mean, don't you? You know, I, I, my dad and mom are already there, but I don't want a tour from dad and mom. I want a tour from God. I want to walk with him. All that life that, that we've been fighting for, that come and see, we're finally there. Come and see. God is saying that to you this morning. Come and see. Follow me. And life's journey begins when we finally follow Jesus. So, so what we got to ask ourselves. See, a lot of us are, are following Jesus when it's convenient. I mean, that's pretty much our country as a whole. The reason we're doing this six-week pursuit is I want six weeks where we can all pursue Jesus together. I mean, and see where that changes. I, I'd love it to change us as people. Where we really get a hold of Jesus, something different than we ever have. I'd love it to get a hold of us where we're, we don't want to stop. We're not done pursuing Jesus. Let's keep going. You know, how can we pursue Jesus more? Because, see, those disciples never stopped till the day they died. They are still pursuing Jesus in heaven. It hasn't ended. But everything else ended. Fishing ended. Their homes, their, their marriages, well, they died. They lost those. Their kids grew up, moved away. They stopped living for everything else. Jesus became it. And he changed, not just here, he changed eternity. So God is asking you this morning, what do you want? What do you want? And he's waiting for your answer. Let's all bow our heads, could we? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you pursue us. Your word is clear on that. You you have pursued us. Our whole lives, you have been after us. You have chased us. You have set things in our lives where you could get our attention. Just as that day you walked past those two disciples, getting their attention, causing the Holy Spirit to speak through John the Baptist, and John saying, there is the Lamb of God, and two young men Wanting a life change. Something has to be different in this life. Something has to be real. And if, if this is the Messiah, I want to know it. And as they followed you, you gave them life's big question. What do you want? And Lord, you're asking that of us this morning. What do you want? You just want to make more money, have more things, go more places, or do you really want what life's all about? Are you really looking about what, what we're here on this earth all for? Lord, you are the answer. You're the way. You're the truth. You're the life. You're everything. We don't need anything else if we have you. You are the very breath we breathe according to your word. You're the air. You're the, you're the food we eat. In fact, you even say, I will supply all your needs. So, Lord, help us this morning to ask ourselves the question, are we seeking you? Are we just getting by? And I thank you for it, Lord. Can we all stand?